and welcome back to In The Works, the show where we document the progress we're making on our personal projects. Now today, we're coming at you from a different location. Obviously, we're not here at BKS, and that's because we're here at my home shop. Well, my garage. But I think I picked the perfect project to get started here today. Some of you may remember that I started on a dagger last week where I did the forge well to the edge and drew it out and forged the blade. And I told you all that it's gonna be a bollock dagger. Well, now most of those parts of this bollock dagger exist. I have the blade heat treated and ground, nice hollow grind. I have it then ground back out ready for 80 grit. I forged a mosaic uh, guard, arched guard. I have a piece of stabilized beautiful wood from uh, Grease on here that's almost fitted to the guard. I don't want to do all that final fidgety fitting until I have it actually polished out and etched. And then I have a bone handle, which is pretty cool in itself. It's a piece of Campbell bone. I've never done a bone handle quite like this. Uh, I've done some antler work, but I've never done one where I fully pierce it and carve it. Uh, it does smell a little bit, so I'll be wearing a respirator, shouldn't inhale that stuff anyway. Uh, but I'll start by drilling it, then I will use a series of either files, uh, Dremel tools, or maybe even little saw blades to do the piercing work. Uh, first, let's start by drawing it with some pencil, and then get it traced in marker. All right, the layout of the design went pretty well. I was able to do it mostly all in pencil and I don't think I have to even use a marker. I see the pencil sticking pretty solid, but I don't want to finish my design uh, all the way around the handle just in case I smudge it. So I'm gonna go ahead with the amount that I have laid on now and just move to the drill press and start drilling holes where the recesses will be.
With the holes now mostly drilled in our handle, it's time to move on to using a Dremel. I'm gonna use a high speed steel cutter. Uh, it's a very small round uh, cylindrical cutter and I'm just gonna start connecting the dots essentially, just turning those single drilled holes into slots. Uh, we'll start on the spirals on the top and the bottom and then we'll move on to the heart shapes and all the diamond shapes within the body of the handle. Of course, some of you are wondering where Ilya has been for the last week or so. Uh, basically, for the last two weeks while I've been forging this dagger and then working on the parts of it, um, he's been doing some epic carving and engraving and just amazing work on a Damascus longsword. That work that he's doing is mostly done in his home. Just like I'm working here at my home shop, he's working at his home. Uh, he has a nice jeweler's bench with all his engraving equipment all set up there. So he's carving an angel on one side and what will be a dragon on the other and all the fittings are all carved crazy. It's a lot like the Excalibur project that we made on Man in Arms a long time ago. Uh, even crazier because he's got gold and silver inlay in there. So that's what he's doing right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll catch up with that project at some point. But for now, you're stuck with me. may notice I'm wearing a Twitch shirt. That's right, I do stream on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash stalkertron. I do mostly gaming, but I have done several live streams here in my home shop of forging and different things. 
Uh, there will be more of that to come. So uh, if you're into some live streaming, check out twitch.tv slash stalkertron. With the bulk of the Dremel work now complete, it's time to move on to using a hand file. Now I have a nice little set of files that I got in my local hardware store, I'm sure you can get them on Amazon, Home Depot, wherever you go, that have all kinds of different shapes and you can just screw them out into the handle, change them out really easy. So I'm going to start using a very flat file and just start making any little irregular surfaces on the sides as flat as I possibly can. Then we'll move on to doing some of the more tricky shapes.
At this point, I'm gonna switch out the cutters in the Dremel. I'm gonna move on from using a very small cylindrical one to a larger cone shape. It has a little bit of a round tip, but it's still a cone shape. That's gonna allow me to get in kind of fine and then start pressing harder and harder in the slots, uh, creating a wider uh, recess as I go. So I can start off very narrow and then add a little pressure and be able to actually widen it as I go until I get basically the full width of the cutter.
All right, so far everything's going very well. But from here, I consider this to be the hard part. Well, maybe not so much the hard part, but the stressful part. And that is to start carving in the overlaps, the over and unders of the knot work pattern. First, I have to use a pencil and draw along my lines, make sure I have that design right where I want it. If I have some that are supposed to go under instead of over, it won't look quite right. Uh, so I have to make sure I lay that out correctly. And once that's done, I'm gonna actually change out the Dremel from a cutter to a sanding tube. Sanding tube fits over a little rubber fitting uh, so you can reuse that uh, the central part over and over. You can just throw it off, put another little sanding tube on. I'm gonna start with, I think, a 220. I know it's kind of fine, but I don't wanna to have to sand on those spots over and over. So I'm just gonna use the sanding tube and just start laying in my lines nice and lightly. And then I'll start pushing those lines down and under to create more of an overlap as I go. And then a nice fade away from the overlaps themselves.
All right, I'm far from being finished, but so far this project is going great. Uh, it has, however, made me miss man at arms a little. I miss just taking a chunk of material, bone, wood, whatever it is, over to Ferenc, showing him one drawing or a quick sketch, and, uh, you know, half a day or a day later, he would deliver an epic carving. Uh, I don't feel like this is very epic so far. It's just a lot of work, a lot of tedious work, but it will be. I'm very confident. Like I said, it's my first time working in a material like bone. Uh, I've done some carved am antler handles, but nothing with the uh, high relief and piercings like this. Really, uh, one mishap with the drill, uh, one mishap with the cutter, snag and break one of these pieces of bone off, and that's it. You're starting over, at least highly modifying your design. And uh, yeah, none of that happened, so I consider myself very lucky. It's all here from there. I just have to true everything up. I know everybody loves when I say true it up, but I do have to true up. Uh, it's kind of the same mentality I have with blade grinding is remove the bulk of the material. And then as you progress finer and finer through your grits, uh, refine your shape. You're refining shape all the way up until your very last grit. Even it's a thousand grit when you're grinding a blade. Same with this. I'll be refining the shape probably until the day that I actually stick it onto the tang for good for it to live. But uh, it is a little lighter than I want it to be. I mean, it's bone, it's very white. So I will be playing around with some bone aging techniques, probably doing some tea dye, some coffee dyes, until we figure out the right color, because I do want it to look like an artifact. I want it to look kind of old. I'm not trying to fake anybody out, but uh, I do want it to have an aged look. Uh, but yeah, here it is. Bone handle number one, part one, in the books. Thanks for watching.